What became of Sadiq Khan riding high on the everyman narrative? He clinched the mayorality of London in 2016. He cultivated an image of a man of the people, even engaging in relatable activities like tweeting about a meal at Nando's. He positioned himself as a stark contrast to his predecessors and rivals, far removed from Boris Johnson's Bullingdon Club roots and Zach Goldsmith's billionaire background. Khan promised to be a champion of the everyday Londoner. But eight years later, it's a different story. We will tell you all about it. But before that, if you're a fan of non-corporate funded free news and analysis, you've landed on the right YouTube channel. Okay, let's begin. Eight years later, it's painfully clear that Khan's man of the people persona was nothing but a performance. The so-called champion of the working class has morphed into an elitist are doing even Boris Johnson. Under his watch, City Hall has been transformed into a sanctum of highbrow elitism and culture war peddling. From critical race theory to trans ideology, every trendy highbrow belief has seeped into his administration. Khan's origins may be humble, but his governance has steamrolled over the very people he vowed to defend. At the time of recording this video, London faces a critical decision at the polls, with Sadiq Khan audaciously vying for a third term. Despite a narrowing lead over his conservative challenger, Susan Hall, distressing surveys suggest Khan might just clinch it again. His potential re-election looms as a dire misfortune for London, a city already grappling with his divisive leadership. While it was once merely a financial playground for the affluent, under Khan, it has transformed into a sanctimonious sandbox for the woke brigade. Khan's tenure at City Hall has been nothing short of patronizing lecture aimed at Londoners. His focus has clearly shifted from tangible improvements in city infrastructure to imposing moralistic reforms on its residents. Take for example his patronizing Mate campaign, where he condescendingly urged men to police each other's behavior towards women. The campaign's undertone was unmistakably condescending, singling out white working class men as the usual suspects of sexism. This is quintessential Khan. The disparity in Sadiq Khan's priorities is glaringly obvious and deeply troubling. While his administration zealously campaigns against sexism, allegedly peddled by sexist fellas on the pull, it shows a bewildering disinterest in the stark and deadly issue of knife crime plaguing the city. Recently, during a radio debate, when Tory candidate Susan Hall raised the alarming issue of gangs wielding machetes in London, Khan's response was dripping with sarcasm and disdain. His patronizing retort that Hall should, quote-unquote, stop watching The Wire is a testament to his dismissive and dangerously out-of-touch attitude. In Khan's administration's ideological narratives trump pressing urban crisis. He's quick to lecture about the supposed ills of casual misogyny among white men in skinny jeans, yet he remains markedly reticent on escalating knife crimes, a predominantly tragic saga within the black community where young black Londoners are disproportionately the perpetrators as well as victims. This selective silence is more than negligence. It is a willful ignorance. Even amidst the dire straits of the COVID-19 crisis, Sadiq Khan's default was to dive into the divisive depths of critical race theory. Early into the pandemic, instead of uniting London under the banner of shared human vulnerability, Khan chose to highlight and politicize the virus's disparate impact on the BAME community, which is Black Asians minority ethnic. Under Khan's stewardship, identity politics have not only overshadowed but seem to override concerns for safety. His fervent adherence to what some might call the trans religion showcases this clearly. His repetitive affirmations that trans women are women, trans men are men, non-binary people are non-binary, all gender identities are valid, echo throughout his tenure, often overshadowing other critical issues. Khan's time in office has starkly revealed the hypocritical doublespeak of his administration. Proclaiming London as open for all, he subtly crafts this slogan to differentiate the so-called enlightened elites from the rest deemed to possess a closed mindset. In reality, his version of open London is a tightly gated community welcoming only those who subscribe to his checklist of approved views, pro-EU, 
anti-borders, environmentally zealous and unwaveringly pro-trans. Does London truly feel open under Sadiq Khan's leadership? For those who supported Brexit, which Khan actively opposed, calling for a second referendum, the city seems anything but welcoming. The same goes for the single mother who now faces a 12.5 pounds daily charge to drive her older car in the city due to Khan's ULEZ policy, punishing those just trying to manage their daily lives. The stark reality of this selective openness was dramatically illustrated last month when police advised a Jewish man to stay clear of a pro-Palestine demonstration because he was too openly Jewish, implying a risk of arrest. Khan's administration has not only divided London along ideological lines but has also transformed its citizens into categories of race and identity subject to his moral judgments from on high. This culture war, dressed up as a class struggle, showcases a city leader more enamored with imported ideologies than with the needs of his constituents. Khan needs to go.